Hello, everyone. Today, I will talk about the reflection conditions in X-ray diffraction. I will explain what it is and how to use it. In order to proceed, you need to roughly know how X-ray diffraction works or what it measures. If you don't, please go review the content before you come back here. So in short, uh, X-ray diffraction measures distances between parallel planes in a crystal. OK, let me show you some pictures first. So uh, there are two types of X-ray uh, diffractions. Suppose you have a large chunk of uh, crystal. Here, large means bigger than 1 millimeter in one dimension. Sometimes 0.1 millimeter works too. And if you uh, have a big chunk of crystal, you can do the so-called single crystal X-ray diffraction. And your data will look like this. You will have a black background with many bright spots. Or any of these are pretty good images. So each bright spot corresponds to a set of parallel planes. The bright spot basically uh, tells you the distances between them. And you can go through some mathematics and figure out what kind of planes they are and, uh, and label them uh, with some numbers. They are called Miller indices. Uh, and the process of going from this film, uh, uh, these dots, to the Miller indices is called indexing. OK, sometimes you cannot grow a big crystal. You only have very small crystals. And you can do the second type of crystal uh, diffraction. Uh, that's the powder, X-ray powder diffraction. And your data will look like this. Or maybe this one is better. Yeah. So instead of many dots, you will have many rings, uh, co-central rings. Uh, this ring is essentially the dots you have seen before. But because now you, you only have um, small crystal lights, or small powders pointing in all kinds of random directions. That randomness uh, blurs the, those dots in the in the uh, angular direction. So now you see the rings, and you can do a radio cut and get the the spectra. The uh, you will get many peaks, and those the peak heights tells you uh, the peak heights tell you the uh, the intensity of those. Uh, those rings or the brightness of those rings and you can see many ones here and again you can do uh, the same mathematics and uh, you can label those uh, peaks uh, with some numbers which are the middle indices which are the, the parallel planes okay so sometimes you will see Let me find a good example. I said this one. Okay, sometimes you will have 004, 006, 008 here. So you might ask, uh, what about 005, 007, or maybe 001? So if you know what mirror indices are, they, they, 001 and 004, they are the same sets of uh, parallel planes. So the natural question is, why why don't we see, um, say, the odd ones? And that is actually the uh, reflection rules, or the extinction rules. So um, the symmetries in, in the crystal will cause some peaks to exist or not exist. And uh, you can use them to determine um, what space group your sample uh, is in. So uh, let's review. So the general procedure is you somehow grow a crystal, or somehow got a crystal. Then you do either the single crystal diffraction or the powder diffraction. And then you go through some mathematics to uh, index those data. And then you can look up the um, reflection conditions or reflection rules to figure out what space groups um, the data is in. 
Okay, so it turns out there are only three origins of those uh, reflection rules for general positions. And the first uh, category of them is the uh, due to centered cells. Second one is due to glide, and third one is due to screw. Now I will give you some uh, detailed explanations of uh, of them. Okay, the first example uh, I will give is about screw. So let's say we go to uh, this space group with a single screw axis, P21. So if you have a screw symmetry, what happens is as long as you have one atom located at x, y, z, you will have another atom located at minus x, half plus y, and minus z. Those are all in the um, fractional coordinate. OK, so let me write it down here. So the screw, if you have the screw symmetry, then suppose you have a x, y, z. Let's say we call it the x vector. Then you have another one at uh, minus y. Is it minus y? minus x half plus y and minus z minus x half y plus one half and minus z okay now uh, you also need to know a little bit of how x-ray diffraction works so assume you have one atom um, at x its signal will be some complex number times 2 pi i let's say h dot x and here this h is the middle indices h k l and due to the symmetry you have this second atom which is of the same type as you have the same f0 value then e to the 2 pi i h times this vector let's say we call it x prime Okay, now you can just plug them in, and you you can pull out f zero, then e to the um, you can also pull out the the y part, two pi i, k y, and then e to the two pi i, h x plus l z. Plus e to the two pi i minus hx minus lz and also you have this one half here so you have e to the 2 pi i one half k okay now you can proceed e to the 2 pi i ky so this one is basically minus 1 to the k this one, there's nothing like um, special. This one is also nothing special. So in general, they will be non-zero values, some arbitrary values, and they they won't really be equal to each other. But uh, uh, it could happen that uh, H and L are zero. So there's a special case, uh, HKL, uh, so we are not uh, interested in general HKL, we are interested in 0K0. Zero zero. So for these type of peaks, uh, this thing will be very special. So essentially, when that happens, you will get this one will become 0 and this one will become 1. So this becomes 1 plus, this is also 1, minus 1 to the K. So now you can see it's, uh, the, the extinction rule or reflection rule comes. Because uh, as long as k is odd, you will have a zero refraction. Here I'm using one atom as an example. You, you can easily see it applies to all atoms. So the signal is zero for uh, k is odd. So uh, the refraction rule is usually stated in a positive way. So they will say zero k zero has a refraction rule of k even for a screw. 
Oh, now let me show you one book, which talks about this. It has a table, so it uh, I can show you like how to read uh, these tables. So this is the book. It's um authoritative book. Let me show you which one it is. It's this from this international um, society. Forty dollars. Okay, now uh, the example I, I just gave you, the screw axis is along the y direction. So it's along B, along the y. So the refraction rule is at 0, k0. And it has to be even. Any other one will be 0. Okay, now that's basically how you read these tables. So for. Um, Let's go back to the table. So for the glide, it's uh, very similar mathematics, and uh, um, I won't bore you with that. I can talk about the centered cell as another example. So now let me first show you the table. Now in this case, let's say we do the center cell, and the reflection rule says h plus k has to be 2n for side center cell. Okay, now let me show you how to derive it in 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 some simple mathematics. Okay, first let's find. Uh, side center cell, let's say C2. Now you can see uh, there are multiple symmetries. Uh, we are not interested in this two. We are interested in this one. So as long as you have one atom at XYZ, you will have one atom at uh, half, half, and uh, zero, uh, basically a diagonal shift. Okay, so center cell, side center cell, side center cell. Suppose you have X, Y, Z, you automatically have X, Y, Z plus half, half, zero, a diagonal shift in the A, B plane. Okay, now it's the same derivation. So you have one atom at two pi i h dot x. This one is x. This one is, sorry, this one is x. This one is x prime. Then you have another one at 2 pi i, h dot x prime. And now you can really pull out the whole 2 pi i, h dot x. And then you have 1 plus e to the 2 pi i, half h plus half k, and 0. Or it's 1 plus minus 1 to the h plus k. So now you can see the, the um, reflection condition basically says it applies to any HKL, but only the even H plus K will be non-zero. Okay, that's all about this reflection rules. Hope this is something useful for you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.